Dentistry is an art and a science of healing the abnormalities of the oral cavity, be it decay, gum disease, malpositioning of the teeth or the jaws. These teeth can withstand tremendous forces. A lateral force comes in out of position or out of alignment. It can typically break anything, particularly artificial surfaces. And that's what we're most concerned about. That's why when we replace a tooth with an artificial surface, we want to make sure that the substance we're using, the dental material we're using, has a lot of the same components as a natural tooth. Tooth enamel is made up of a compound called hydroxyapatite. Fluoride's a halogen, and in the water, will bond with the hydroxyapatite to create an outer layer of your tooth enamel called fluoroapatite. With fluoroapatite, it hardens the teeth and it doesn't allow the bacteria to quite possibly not adhere to the tooth as well, but most importantly, it does not allow the acid to penetrate and break down that enamel by having simply fluoroapatite in the uh, structure of the enamel. All the restorative dentistry we do is with developed dental materials and they're developed for a certain function. For example, the white fillings that you see now that are so common are actually made of a plastic material, this GMA molecule. They are used not only to fill a cavity, to restore the tooth, but to seal the tooth from future cavities. People don't want other people to know they have had cavities. It restores the tooth in a way that they look not only aesthetically pleasing, but they are functionally the same as they were before. The problem with those teeth being aesthetically pleasing is that often the material may not be the best material under a circumstance such as stress or compressive strength or lateral forces. They are very beautiful. They are not always as functional as say some metals, which would give a tooth discoloration and an obvious appearance of its artificial nature. A silver filling, which may be the, the perfect filling material because it's malleable, it fits into the cavity very well, it seals optimally and has nearly perfect thermodynamic protection against changes in hot and cold which can always cause toothache or tooth discomfort. But it seals so well around the margins, the edges of the cavity, we see sometimes the least amount of destruction over the longest period of time. It wears at almost the same rate as the enamel does. With normal function, the tooth does not wear out any faster than the supporting enamel, and at the same time, feels more natural to the human body. The tooth colored fillings, no matter what, they're made of plastic and plastic tend to stain, they strain, they shrink, and they're also porous. We get better and better tooth color fillings every year. They're constantly improved, but they're still, they're a bit more sensitive than other types of fillings at the same depth. It has to be a consideration of the practitioner, what is the best material, dental material, to restore to full function conservation of tooth. If we can do a filling that's much smaller because of the material we're using, yes, we don't want to take away tooth. The more tooth we take away, we can't replace it. The best material <laughs> was the original equipment, was the original enamel. That also has to be a consideration when preparing teeth for the optimum or what we'd call optimum cavity preparation. And how we design that preparation will also extend the life of a restoration.